As you learn about the narcissistic pattern, it's also wise to reflect on the much healthier alternatives. Now below, you're going to find a link to my new extensive course called Ready, Set, Connect. It addresses both the mindset and the skills involved in gratifying relationships, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. Let's begin today with a certain good news, bad news kind of realization. The good news is that there are many people, and I hope that you would be included in this, who are dedicated to being lifelong learners, and you'd like to have insights and awareness so that you can approach your relationships in a very conscientious kind of way. The bad news, though, is that there are many individuals out there in your world who are game players. You might have the assumption or may or have the impression that in the beginning time, they may be willing to go along with you and grow with you, only to find out over time that they have a certain game that they play with you, and I'm just going to call it the feed me, starve you game. And it's very disillusioning when you begin realizing that these are individuals who not only are not prone toward growth, but they look at you as someone that they can just exploit or manipulate or use until your utility is up to them, and then they'll move on to somewhere else. Um, one of the things that's going to be necessary, and I know that's kind of jaded to kind of have to say this, but you need to learn how to think like a narcissist at times, not because you want to beat them at their game, but you want to know what's going on with them so that you don't get sucked into the games that they try to pull you into. Now, I want us to begin uh, with a realization that when narcissists approach you for any type of relationship, they already have certain ingredients or thoughts or trends or patterns that they're bringing to the equation that you may not realize right up front. For example, many narcissists already, before you show up, uh, have the notion that says, I've learned the psychological language of judgment. I realize that judgment is everywhere, and I'm deeply seated in that. These are individuals who think in terms of who's uh, correct and who's incorrect and who's going to get uh, praised and who's going to get scorned. And so they think in terms of judgment uh, as opposed to, let's say, collaboration or a form of acceptance. Likewise, th that sets them up also to think as they engage with you, in this relationship, someone is going to be one up and someone is going to be one down. And guess which role you're going to be in? Unfortunately, they think in terms of uh, how to uh, dominate and how to have an, an upper hand over other individuals. They may not show their cards right away. Another thing that they bring with them as they engage with you that sets them up for their game playing is that these are individuals who are highly needy and they desperately want to be admired and they desperately want positive reinforcement. You know, we all have certain needs and, and desires, but they take it to a, a really strong extent. In addition, one of the things that you eventually learn is in the narcissist's mind, they don't really care about knowing you down at a deep level. They, they may want to know certain things about you so they can figure out how to exploit you better, but beyond what you can do for them, they're not that interested in who you really are. Uh, instead, they bring a notion that says, you exist to prop me up. And now, none of them will, will say right up front, yeah, that's how I think. But their behaviors uh, uh, illustrate that thought over and over because, again, they're not tuned into you, but they want you to be tuned into them. And uh, as they engage with you, another thought is they're constantly wondering, how can I get you to understand your role in my life? There are certain things that I want from you and I need from you. How am I going to get you to do whatever I say you need to, uh, to do? And as a result, these individuals have less than genuine uh, desires or interest in you. It's all about me getting what I want. They're game players. Now, I want, to, I want us to see if we can kind of take a look at how bringing that kind of thinking to the relationship 
prompts them to act and behave toward you because the more you're aware of their game playing, you know, them having to, uh, uh, to, to say, you need to feed me. And if it means that I starve you, I'm willing to do that. There are certain patterns that, uh, that you can watch for that, that indicates that this is indeed what you're wanting, uh, what you're dealing with. And keep in mind that narcissists will often come at you with a combination of ingratiating behavior and then aggressive behavior. They want you to, uh, they want to, uh, get tight with you, but the, over time you're going to see their aggression. And so that being the case, one of the things that you want to watch for is narcissists who will, uh, start out with a notion that can be described as, Hey, let's you and me be buddies. Uh, many times narcissists can uh, be playful with you or uh, tell jokes or uh, tease in a friendly kind of way. They can be charming. They may seem to show an interest in you and they like to, uh, to pretend like they want you as an insider. And you're thinking, I like this. This is nice. But unfortunately, the narcissist is thinking, let me see how much loyalty I can gain from you so that I can use that to my benefit down the road. Uh, and uh, as part of that, they also uh, have an inclination to pretend to coordinate with you as a means of creating false goodwill. In other words, they may help you on a project or do favors for you or remember favorite things that you like and go in that direction so that they can start out with that ingratiating kind of behavior. But then over time, as you begin to, to know them more deeply, You'll, you'll notice other patterns that come to the surface. For example, they can call your judgments or preferences into question. Like, what are you doing that for? Or where did you come up with an idea like that? Or sometimes it's a, of a victimization kind of mindset. Like, why are you doing this to me? I mean, do you realize how miserable you're making me uh, uh, feel? And so they can uh, call your uh, notions into question. And then on top of that, then they'll uh, be more than uh, free in, in letting you know what the correct, better alternative is. Well, why don't you try this instead? Or I know that this is uh, what your habit has been, but if you'll do it this way, my way, then uh, they're, they're going to feel a whole lot better with that. And as a result, over time, you begin seeing that narcissists will stubbornly hold on to many black and white pronouncements. They don't have a sense of mutuality. It's like, nope, there's a fixed agenda, and wouldn't you know it, it happens to be my agenda, and I get to write it. And so they operate with a notion that more or less implies, you need my input, I don't need your input, and that uh, that theme comes forward over and over in a pronounced kind of way. Uh, basically, they're thinking, I'm, I'm the one who's in the know, you're not in the know, let's, uh, let's proceed with that. So what this does is uh, they're hoping that they can set up a pattern where you're constantly having to say yes to them and no to yourself. Part of the game that they have is they say, I want you to feed me, uh, is uh, I want you to starve yourself. I'm the one who has the needs. I'm the one who uh, needs to be uh, conformed to. Can't you get that, that through your thick head? And so they don't really have that, that strong interest in uh, having a sense of teamwork. Over time, then, their sense of anger and agitation becomes more and more prominent. Early on, they may be more friendly and pleasant, like I say, ingratiating. But then as you say something or do something that doesn't fit their mold, there's the irritability, the impatience, the agitation, the belittlement. Sometimes it goes into rage. Sometimes it becomes sadistic where they actually take delight in running you into the ground. Many times you'll be invited. I put that in quotation marks, invited to debate with them. And then when you come into that debate, then they'll just pummel you verbally. Then they can become passive aggressive, whether it's a, a proactive non-cooperation or a smear campaign or a punishing withdrawal. And the whole point that they have as they engage with you is for you to throw your hands up and say, okay, okay, I quit, I give. And they win in that game, feed me, starve you. That's how they do it. Now, let's, let's understand that this whole game that they're trying to play with you is part of that submissive, sub subordinate wish that they have as they engage with anyone. Uh, they want you to play the role of the lowly person so that they can be in the dominant position. And I want you to ask certain questions of yourself as you begin realizing that this is what you're up against. 
One of the questions I'm hoping you can ask is, do you commonly feel that the relationship is far too one-sided? That's a red flag that implies you're being sucked into the game. Do you find yourself sometimes being too trusting? And I don't mean this in any kind of shaming way toward you, but are you perhaps a little bit too optimistic as you engage with other individuals? Uh, unfortunately, sometimes you have to factor in a certain amount of caution or even sometimes a certain amount of pessimism. Does your optimism sometimes get uh, run away from you in a not so good kind of way? Are you a person that's conflict averse? Uh, you can sense that there's some strain and tension. It's like, I don't want to get into that now, which actually keeps you uh, going along with them. Or perhaps on the other end, do you find yourself entering into the conflict with the narcissist, but in uh, in a circular arguing kind of way only? You stand up yourself, they get mad, you get mad, and, and uh, you have all these exchanges back and forth, but nothing really changes, but you just keep coming back that implies that you've been sucked into their game. Uh, do you assume sometimes that it becomes your role to make that narcissist think and prioritize differently? Uh, the more you go into that kind of space, again, you're pulled in because it's going to be a, a never-ending effort on your part because they're not going to change in, in the vast majority of the cases. And then I think a, a question you're going to want to ask yourself as you begin realizing that they're game players, uh, where they say, you need to feed me and I'm going to starve you. Do you need to reevaluate this relationship? Because I know there are times when you may think this is not working well for me and I'm not liking it one bit. Now, now let's acknowledge there are different levels of tolerance you're going to have in certain relationships based on the nature of the relationship. For example, uh, your tolerance is going to be different if it's someone you're married to or someone in your extended family or if it's your kids versus your neighbor or somebody in an organization or at work. And so I understand that there's no one size fits all kind of uh, way that we can look at this. But I'm hoping you can see that as you go into a relationship thinking, I want to grow and I hope this person can grow with me. Unfortunately, there are some individuals who think, uh, I just want to use you and I like to play games. And that being the case, I'm hoping that you can remind yourself, my relationships are not a competition and I don't want to be in a relationship such as it is. It's simply one way. Instead, I'm hoping you can determine I'm very willing to get along with other individuals, but don't expect me to fill someone's role uh, who is just simply a game player, especially when it's been predetermined that I'm going to be the designated loser. I don't want to play that game. And I hope that you can be aware of uh, what you're up against, and I hope these videos can help you in that respect. If you've not already hit the subscribe button, hit that like button too. I would invite you to do that. We're going to keep more coming in your direction. I know many of you could use some counseling, some therapy as you uh, seek through uh, ways to figure out how you're going to respond to this. You know that I've been sponsored for years now by the people at betterhelp.com. And uh, there's, a, there's a link below that will take you to their website. If you go through that link, you can get a 10% discount in your first month. It, it's very accessible. It's affordable. And uh, there's just a few forms to fill out. Please seek out the help that you would need in, in, with respect to that. Likewise, I have my therapeutic uh, video classes. It's like signing up for an online course, and each class has multiple videos with written documents and guided questions. We have uh, Ready, Set, Connect, uh, knowing how to make good connection skills. Uh, this is me about establishing uh, good boundaries, free to be, finding yourself despite the controllers. And so seek that out if that's a need that you would have. Likewise, I have my webinars that have already been produced, but you can still purchase those. We have our uh, Surviving Narcissism podcast. We have our website with many articles on there as well as my book. So we have plenty of re resources for you. Unfortunately, uh, when you're dealing with narcissists, you're dealing with game players. And I don't see a whole lot of upside to that game that's called Feed Me, Starve You. We're not going to play that game. Uh, in the meantime, I'm hoping what you can say is I can see through it and I'm committed to a non-game playing uh, mindset where I'm just simply committed to dignity, respect, and civility toward you, but beginning with myself. And in doing so, I hope that your uh, path is going to be established as, uh, as one who's uh, seeking steadiness and healthiness so that you can be the person of peace that you were intended to be.